All right, welcome everybody. Aesop Grimm here, and this is episode one for our tutorial attempt on Endless Space 2. Let me get my timer up. Do, 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 do. There we go. Countdown has begun 30 minutes. Uh, here's content I wanted to show you guys. I have all the expansion packs, I have most of the add ons. Some of these are things that you get from gamestogether.com for participating. Like they're automatic rewards and they're things like this is uh, the Basirixo Minor Faction. Well, I'm just not getting into this game, so it, it doesn't matter. I don't think I've gotten this stuff yet because it's telling me to open up a Steam page, which I tried to do, but it, it didn't open the page. But I'm not worried about it. You can see I've got check marks and everything else. Um, the updates uh, are the same thing. I think these, most of these are free updates. So that's how my game is configured. Um, I don't have any mods loaded. I've heard that there's a color mod that's really highly recommended to help differentiate between the empires, but I don't have anything loaded right now. And we'll go, let's see, beginner. Tutorial will determine your settings and explain basics of the game. This will begin a game with the recommended settings. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Under the visionary leadership of Emperor Zelibus, we have become a proud and powerful nation. It is time to rise up grasp our future, and seek our destiny among the stars. Imagine the future that we can build. We shall construct great fleets, send them out to make great discoveries, and through their conquests, secure our place in this rich galaxy. We will discover new sciences, a new life. We will greet new peoples and turn them into new patriots. Together, we shall leave <laughs> our mark on history. Looks a little subservient. <laughs> For together, we can become anything our hearts desire. Whatever the cost, whatever the effort, let us not shy away from the greatness that is our birthright. And there's your dystopian re reality. So once again, we are the baddies and we are authoritarians. It is a time of great peace and prosperity for the Empire. Usurpers have been vanquished. Disagreements resolved. Wars ended. The Empire is truly united. Now is the time for your great nation to forge a path to the stars, to bring your great civilization to other worlds, to impress upon any other races you discover that your way is the best way. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, well, it says here, Empire Information. The Empire is theoretically under the control of a central monarchy. However, the rate of expansion means that the society cannot be ruled that way effectively. In fact, the systems of the colonial diaspora are colonized by designated corporations who work hand in hand with the Ministry of Investment and Development. The Ministry of Security is involved as well due to the need for native and or alien pacification, security forces, defense and surveillance. So see all this centralized planning, right? Big government, the government is involved in everything. Affinity, Emperor's Will. The voice of the Emperor is a powerful thing. Use influence to buy technologies, constructions, and items on the marketplace. Generate influence for each construction. And we get the traits Expansionists 1. Strong propaganda lapped up by eager colonists mean that the people are less inclined to be annoyed when their empire grows. 
effects negative 25% over colonization penalty on empire. Okay. Patriots 2. Real patriots that are ready to give their blood and life to their empire lead to higher conscription rates uh, on systems. Yeah. Yeah, that makes me think of a few different nations that we've seen in history, none of which hold the all-volunteer uh, option. This is one of those, it's not openly said, but it's extremely highly encouraged that you, you, you serve in the military. Xenolinguistics starts with this technology already discovered whether you wish to make trade research wage war or have peaceful relations with the aliens their communications must first be studied and conversation brought to a higher level than merely dropping prepositions and speaking more loudly all right so we get xeno industrial infrastructure as a result of that plus 10 that symbol there means industry plus 10 industry per fertile planet plus 10 industry per planet overall any kind of planet uh, plus 10 industry per temperate planet we also are able to refine titanium so this that's like a strategic resource from Stellaris well, we can exploit it off-world agribusiness, a host of incremental breakthroughs and in trade agreements, cultural translation, and the handling of Xeno foods. Together, given the umbrella term off-world agribusiness, permits diverse types of growth in nutrition, fuel, and material sciences. And that grants us the infinite supermarkets, which improves approval by 10 as well as xeno synergy which is a type of treaty that we can offer in diplomacy and that enables diplomacy with minor civilizations as well as the pirate league okay what is this saying browse to the next notification let's just click done Greetings, Emperor. Welcome to Endless Space 2. In order to ease your transition into the seat of Imperial power, some of the usual starting conditions, including unique faction traits, have been temporarily disabled. Once you have gained a better understanding of the game fundamentals, these features will be re-enabled. We've got a lot of reading to do, guys, but uh, we're going to try and be methodical about this. The Endless Galaxy is rich with opportunities, but also dangers. In order to survive this universe, you will need to build a mighty civilization that can conquer powerful foes. Your tale begins here, in the middle of the galaxy, in your home star system, Doucet. Use the scroll wheel to zoom in, or click, left click, on your star system to open the star system management screen. Okay, well first let's take a look at where we're at. We're in a spiral galaxy. Looks like it has two arms. And we're located on the outer... Well, the interior of the outer rim, I would say. Okay, and it wants us to... We can either zoom all the way in or we can just click it. Either one will work. Long ago, Dusay was colonized by the United Empire's star-faring forebears when they settled on Raya. Today, it is the beating heart of the Empire's ambitions, but it can be made even stronger. To strengthen, you must master the production and exploitation of several resources. Only colonized planets' resources can be used. So see, we have not colonized this planet to say one which is a huge planet and it is lava and sterile and hot and uh, to say two is a large planet it's a desert planet so it too is hot and it is sterile and we have not colonized either one we can tell because this is grayed out and we're not able to colonize it that's why it's grayed out the flag means that we could colonize it the fact that it's grayed out means that we're not able to 
Uh, this right here is what we call Fidsy, I believe, and we'll see about that here in a minute. Oh, yeah, right here. Five key resources are critical. Food, industry, dust, science, and influence. And uh, that acronym spells out FIDSI. And you find it in most Amplitude Studio games or some variation of it. it. That's my understanding. Their production per turn on any colonized planet scales with the size of the population living on the planet. For example, on Raya, with its population of three, right here. Living, uh, let's see, base production is multiplied by three. So the base production here is 12 industry, for example, but because we have three pops, we're getting 37 industry. It rounded up. Um, that, that doesn't really, the math doesn't add up there, so I'm not really sure what's going on with that. It should be times three on everything, right? So we should have six influence, but we got nine. Oh, we have other items down here that are increasing it more. Although this should be through the roof. So I'm probably not reading something right here. Maybe these are not the baseline stats. I'm not sure. Okay, well, we'll figure it out as we go. The total FIDC production of the system scheduled for the next turn is displayed in the side panel right here. Note that even though there is only a single colonized planet in the Doucet system, the total FIDC production is greater than Raya's production. This is because of system improvements. That's down here represented by this icon that's one of the things you'll see icons used a lot icons and colors in in amplitude studios games are really important and once you learn how to read that stuff it's actually faster uh maybe maybe that's not really accurate maybe it's just different but it sure can help speed things up in certain situations System improvements will play a vital role in your empire's development as they will help to enhance the strength and minimize the weaknesses of a system. The list of system improvements constructed is accessible through the system's side panel, probably right here. We have a colony base. See that picture? And then let's read the description. It really kind of paints the picture for you. For your empire to grow and flourish, your planets must be well organized. This imposing administrative center ensures that finances, defense, and commercial affairs run smoothly. See, look at, again, look at the ideology at play here. Big, big government, experts, people qualified for certain positions. Why? Because the masses can't be trusted. This is uh, actually something that scholars refer to as expert culture. People who believe in these ideas, they ultimately, they're elitists. That's, that's my view of it. They are ultimately elitists. They don't trust the normal person. And this has been something, a dynamic that's been at play for centuries, centuries. It's, it's just runs through the whole tapestry of human history. Okay. Galactic headquarters, system improvement. It is from this imposing edifice that empires are ruled. Every one of an empire's star systems, from the most powerful to the most pathetic, answers to its leaders here in the seat of their power. This is a very Romanesque kind of approach, right? Uh, it is the absolute heart of a civilization. To lose it would be catastrophic. Oh. 
Well, yeah, it's still like Rome. This would be like the uh, the Roman Senate. Even though each colony, each outlying region had their own um, bureaucratic building there for, for their governors, and they answered to those governors. But those governors reported up the chain, and all of it ended up in the Roman Senate in Rome itself. And that's what this is representing. It's something akin to that idea. Okay, moving on. In systems, industry production can never be stored, so you should always have something under construction. Otherwise, the industry resource for that turn, which is this symbol, will disappear one turn later. The list of the available constructions shows what can be built in your system. That's this stuff down, uh, this stuff right here. Like most interface elements, remember that you can get more details by hovering over each construction. Also, note that system improvements can only be built once in each system. The improvement drone network is generally a safe choice to start considering its effects. Click on a construction to add it to the queue. So they're recommending drone network, but they're telling you you can pick whatever you want. So let's look at all of it. Okay, Cerebral Reality. This extension of virtual reality entertainment technology permits many individuals to think rather than play together. The boost to science and productivity is worth the surprising effect of an occasional bizarre dream excerpt from a user who has dozed off. So the effects are plus 15 science and plus 15 dust. It'll cost 160 industry and be done in five turns. If we wanted to buy this technology, we would pay 16 influence. Drone network. Operating independent of terrain, weather, and transportation infrastructure. Squadrons of drones can deliver materials across a planet in a fraction of the time required by, by traditional methods. whether they are sowing seeds or supplying raw materials. So we would gain 10 agriculture and 10 industry off this one. And it takes five turns to research and two dust of upkeep. Uh, this one doesn't look like it requires upkeep. So it provides a dust generating service. This one requires dust to run a service. And then here we have Xeno Industries. A better understanding of alien biospheres and alien workers permits the development of industrial projects that take these into account. Alien biospheres and alien workers permit uh, workers. By adapting tools, sites, and processes to local environments, large projects become much more efficient. We get plus 10 industry per fertile, plus 10 per planet, and plus 10 per temperate. What kind do we have? We have a temperate fertile world here. So we would get a total of plus 30 here. We have a planet. It's a temperate planet, and it's a fertile planet. And that's the three tens that you have there. So we would get plus 30 to industry. We would uh, improve with the industrialist faction. These are like special interest groups. Um, it would take eight turns. It also takes four dust for upkeep. We'll, we'll probably hit that one soon, but I like this. Logistics is the king of, of everything uh, most of the time. Um, well, in this game, I've I have heard from multiple places science. Uh, it's like Stellaris. Science is what's going to get you the easiest win. But then, uh, under the umbrella of science, logistics and infrastructure is a big deal. All right. So uh, let's see. The last one is infinite supermarkets. With vastly improved methods for selecting, growing, and harvesting foods, it is possible to deliver any known dish or ingredient anywhere within a colonized world. Wow. Local markets have essentially become infinitely large. Plus 10 
uh, what is that, influence or likability or something? I can't remember. It's like favorability. Uh, political impact, the ecologists will like us. It takes eight turns. So we'll take their recommendation and add in drone networks. I was, I'm tempted to grab this one though. It's probably between these two, but I'll go ahead and grab the um, upgraded transportation network here. It'll take us five turns. The construction at the top of the queue will use your system industry production turn after industry production turn after turn until it is built. This way, several turns might be required depending on the industry cost of your queued construction. Click on end turn when you're ready. Okay. Well, before we do that, let's take a look at this. New luxury resource discovered. Your empire now has access to Giga Lattice. You can use it to upgrade your systems in the economy screen. Oh, here we go. This resource is found in the form of liquid metal lattices that are created under the gigapascals pascals of pressure of gas planets. Its rarity and value bring prestige and power to the nation that controls it. We gain plus two influence per population within a system. Okay. And a new luxury resource. Now we have super spuds. Highly modified tubers that provide a near indestructible food source. Perfected by the endless scientist Vaderhan. Vadarhan. Effects within a system development upgrade. Plus 15% ship buyout product, uh, reduction on the system and plus 15% construction buyout reduction on the system. So I think the buyout thing that it's talking about is whenever we decide to use influence to buy a technology and super spuds help to reduce that amount on ship buyouts and construction buyouts. Okay, we will end turn. As with the other exploited resources, some food is produced every turn. Like industry, it cannot be stockpiled and is immediately used. Naturally, the first use of food is feeding the existing system population. Any excess food is then automatically put towards the system's population growth. As you can see, the population count won't increase for a few more turns. So excess food is what determines how fast population grows and it looks like it's going to take eight turns until a new pop appears. And we have two kinds of populations. We have Imperials. There are many paths for these humanoids, though they tend to prefer economic and military development. Uh, they tend to be industrialists, and the effects are plus one influence. Yeah, the thumbs up is approval and the star is influence. And then we have these guys, the Yusho. Aggressive and martial. martial. The Yushos are known for their willingness to defend their honor and their allies. Effects plus 30 capacity on sterile and plus 20 capacity overall, like in general. Uh, 20 population capacity, I think is what that is saying. Okay. You can right click when you enter into a screen, you can right click to go back to this the previous screen. I like that. That's something Bridger brought brought up. Other games need to duplicate that. You almost never use your right click button in these kinds of games and having it navigate you out back to previous pages is helpful in complex games like this. Political opinion, militarists, of course. Okay. 
preferred luxury is the lattice stuff. These guys prefer the Imperials prefer the super spuds. Maybe you already noticed that different population types live in this system. You will discover that many others exist across the whole galaxy, each with their own unique traits that can modify the planet based productions. Around the system population count is the circular population growth gauge. When this fills up, a new unit of population will be added to the system. The number of turns before this happens is shown by the turn counter to the right of the gauge. More excess food, faster population growth. Note also the population type that will be created is shown by the icon above the turn counter. Above the turn counter. Oh, this is defense. So these guys provide more defense. That's what that icon means. Uh, above the turn counter. So we're going to be generating a, uh, an Imperial. And it tells you there. Type of population which will appear when the growth gauge is filled. Imperials. Okay. While we're here, also notice the system's science production. Which is uh, 22. Science is used by the Empire to research new tech. We're getting plus 12 from planets and plus 10 from galactic headquarters. Again, that's within this system. The uh, Doucet system. It is pulled across the whole empire and used to research new technologies. Okay, disregard what I just said. Our science is cumulative across the entire empire. Open the newly accessible technology screen to learn how to research some game-changing tech. That's up here. Your empire may have found the secrets of voyaging between the stars, but without further scientific discoveries, your civilization will surely stagnate. Science production must be used to research new technologies to solve problems old and new. The technology tree is split into four quadrants. Empire development, right here. We'll scroll out. Now yeah, scroll back in. There we go. Empire development. Uh, science and exploration. Military. That's up here. Military. And economy and trade. See the artistry? This is all one picture, grayed out, and then it takes color when you mouse over it. And each segment of this picture represents one of the core things that this empire is built upon, or maybe any empire, I don't know. But, um, and it all looks terrific. That That's neat looking, and it depicts exactly what it's talking about. It's a good, it emotionally resonates. Oh, man, I just, I like it. Um, each quadrant is split into stages. Access to higher stages is granted by researching a sufficient number of technologies from the previous stage of the corresponding quadrant. So you can say, see, there's five total stages. Stage one, two, nope. Stage one two, three, four, and five. And to get down to each subsequent stage, you have to research a requisite amount of tech in the previous stage. The science cost of all technologies automatically increases for each new tech that you research. In addition, researching higher stage tech also costs more science. Higher stage tech also costs more science. Okay. Different technologies can enable very different effects. Some will grant unique one-off capabilities or empire-wide bonuses. While others will give system improvements or ship designs that need to be built in system. Hover the mouse over the side elements of each technology for details. Okay, the side elements. So, uh, for example, if we were to research plasma metallurgy, let's read what that's about. This is in the economy and trade section. 
Under carefully controlled conditions, the application of extremely high currents through molten metallics can produce metal plasmas. Aside from being fascinating to plasma physicists, these substances underpin some engineering marvels. And we can see that it will politically impact industrialists, but it grants the building interplanetary transport network. There's my timer and Hyperium capture. Now what they're telling us here is that we can mouse over those and we get a further breakdown. Namely, we get the verbiage because over here it tells us what the effects are mechanically. Okay, but an interplanetary transport network, what is that? Due to the interaction of gravitational pulls and magnetic fluxes, low energy paths exist that speed and simplify travel within a star system. By also applying advanced metallurgy and magnetics to transport design, this low cost network speeds ex exchanges throughout the system. Okay, it provides plus three industry per population per planet with strategic deposits on the planet and plus one industry per population on planets just in general and then over here the other building that it allows us to get is the hyperium capture oh it's not a building it's a resource exploitation hyper deuterium deuterium is a rare form of hydrogen with a heavier nucleus this added atomic weight makes it useful as a fuel source for advanced fusion systems, and the technology that helps to obtain it is highly valuable. It enables the exploitation of Hyperium. Okay. Food and industry related technologies are usually a sensible strategy to begin using your science. You can recognize the elements related to these key resources thanks to a color code. Select a technology to research. Several technologies are currently suggested. So it's suggesting this one. If we were to go down the science tree, it says uh, we, we probably ought to go with xenobiology. If we're coming over to food, which is where I typically start because the I, this idea is just ancient. The, uh, a surplus of food leads to a growth in population. A growth spurt in population leads to technology development and technology development, well, and it also leads to larger armies. And technology development and larger armies lead to conquest and expansion. That is an age-old basic algorithm for the expansion of civilizations throughout human history. So I typically go with this because it's historically accurate. Um, and I think I'm going to do that again here. So let's read about this. Planetary landscaping. A tentpole description of a range of horticultural technologies that together become much greater than the sum of their parts. Germline manipulation, programmed seed dispersal, and artificial pheromone manufacture are the basis of an incredible tech that can transform whole continents. We're going to gain political impact with the ecologists. And it grants two different buildings. One is intensive cultivation. Work on accelerated evolution of crops combined with genetic modification radically improves food output while increasing pest resistance. You get 25 food per system level, and you get plus three food on original empire population. Well, we have two populations, so that two original empire populations, so that might double up for us. Political impact again on ecologists. Uh, back on this one. Oh, no, never mind. Okay, sustainable farms. Advances in soil biology have opened the gate to new low impact farming methods that reduce the need for water, fertilizer, and sunlight. In addition, crops will be able to grow in extremes of temperature and soil quality. And see again the picture. You know what this makes me think of? The movie uh, The Martian with Matt Damon in it. And it's, it just, it captures 
what you're thinking about, you know? It also makes me think of um, Blade Runner, the, the newer one. With Ryan, gosh, I can't remember that guy's name. Anyway, it's the newer, it's like Blade Runner 2433 or something like that. So we're going to grab this. Uh, what does this give us? Plus five food per cold planet, plus five food per hot planet, and plus five food per planet in general. Whoops. I don't know why. It, it must be linked to something down here. It's a prerequisite or something. All right, I'm going to select that. Oh, yeah. Facilitating tech, required tech, exclusive tech. Okay. The selected technology will take a fixed number of turns. For us, it's going to be five turns to be researched depending on your empire-wide science production. Note that several technologies can be queued. End your turn when you're ready. All right, we'll end the turn and then we'll save it. All right, so let's uh, maybe go back and I'll have to bring that up on the next go through, but we're going to save this game. Uh, new save. Let's call it YouTube Tutorial Series. Maybe I could call it Chronicle. There we go. Saved with the selected save name or overrides the selection. Well, there we go. Okay, I have to I have to be in the box. All right, guys, so that's the end of this episode. Again, I'm Aesop Grimm. Thank you for coming by the channel. I hope you like what you saw. I hope all is well in your neck of the woods. And I'll see you in the next episode where the story continues.